Welcome back to the 12 Days in March video podcast edition. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this edition, we will explore two conditions defined by cholestatic jaundice, namely primary biliary cirrhosis and primary sclerosing cholangitis for the USMLE Step 1 exam. All right, anyhow, let's go on to ductal diseases, and this one I like. So primary biliary cirrhosis, I don't like that name. I never like the name. It's lousy. Primary, what do they call it? Primary, it doesn't matter. It's biliary cirrhosis. And in fact, they don't actually present a patient with high bili, you know, no high bilirubinemia. That's way late in the disease. And cirrhosis is like end stage. So primary biliary cirrhosis is just ridiculous already, and that's not how it's going to be presented in anything you're going to see on the boards. This is how they're going to see it. And I used to go through this step by step. Tired, itchy women syndrome. Tired, itchy woman syndrome with elevated ALKFOS. And ALKFOS, positive AMA, probably has anthel asthma. And that's the name. That's really, it, that's what it is. It's, and they changed the name of the condition, in fact. I don't know if you saw that. To tired, itchy women, elevated ALKFOS, positive AMA. That's it. And, and the only issue really here is, if you understand also why they have xanthal asthma, we're pretty good. We're all done. That's how she's going to look. There they are. And so she'll look like that, but see this. You can't see it at night. That's brilliant. God, I love it. All right, so disease associations, pathology, we're done. We're going to be quick with biliary cirrhosis. And so thank you. I've always complained about the name. I see they're now calling it primary biliary cholangitis, and that makes more sense. I'm kind of happy. All right, so what do we have here? Autoimmune destruction, intrahepatic ducts. Compare and contrast that with sclerosing cholangitis, intra- and extrahepatic. Middle-aged women, concomitant uh, autoimmune disease, for better or worse. They all have fatigue and pruritus and a high ALK-FOS. Forget about bile. It's about ALK-FOS. And is it conjugated or unconjugated? It's a disease of the ducts. Of course it's conjugated. You know that already, you crazy people. John, this progressive liver failure, we're not going to see it. They use this condition, like anything, signs and symptoms of fat-soluble vitamin deficiency because of the lack of bile salts. The xanthal asthma are because you can't secrete cholesterol. You're not making bile or secreting bile salts, and you can't secrete cholesterol. So these people have hyperlipidemia, mixed type. And same thing, eventually the ducts rot. You can't get bilirubin into the stool, so they're going to have acolic stool. Though, that's it. That's how they're going to present. Those are the peripherals. Okay. So as far as the vitamin deficiencies, we'll cover them all in time. For this one, if you're going to see vitamin A deficiency, this is really where the crux of the questions have been associated with biliary cirrhosis. So again, you can have ocular manifestations with, I'm sorry, now vitamin A deficiency. So corneal ulcer scar and or loss of retinal pigments characterized by loss of nighttime vision. They'll talk about people having motor vehicle accidents driving at night. Nyctalopia. Keratomalacia, too, and that kind of relates to this other issue. So, ductal metaplasia. With, you need vitamin A for cells to differentiate appropriately. And if the cells can't differentiate appropriately, they either become metaplastic or hyperkeratotic. And what's really interesting, again, it seems unique to the USMLE because if you read about vitamin A deficiency, they don't make a big deal of this, but it does seem in both the boards and in the Q banks, they make a big deal about in the skin, skin involvement, dry, desquamating, skin lesions, itchy skin. But, but the idea of vitamin A associated with hyperkeratosis, because cells are not differentiated, should be tied into your thoughts about vitamin A deficiency. Where are we in vitamin A? Uh, what do you need to know? Where is vitamin A stored? Edo cells are in the space of dis and the, or hepatic stellate cells. And what's interesting just about the stellate cells, they're predominantly for vitamin A storage, but when the liver is, da liver is damaged, they differentiate into these uh, myoepithelial cells, myofibroblasts that are responsible for the development of fibrosis in patients with liver disease. I'm just linking stellate cells as storage cells for vitamin A in the liver. It's also a fibrotic process. Just the vitamin A, be familiar with both the skin and ocular manifestations. And if you're going to see vitamin A deficiency, you're more than likely going to see it in the setting of biliary cirrhosis. In high alkfos, again, you need GGT to distinguish whether it's come from the liver or bone. AMA, they will give that to you. The patients can have elevated transaminases from inflammatory diseases or the patocytes surrounding the portal triads, hypercholesterolemia.
So the biopsy, do be familiar with the biopsy in this condition. So it is a lymphocytic infiltrate also in the portal region. Granulomas, granulomas are present and they have this classic description of florid duct lesion. I don't even know what the hell it is and I've spent a lot of time looking at it. So it seems to me you destroy the bile ducts and upstream you get proliferation of other ductules upstream from the damaged ducts. But be, just be familiar with this description, so granulomatous disease with florid duct lesions. There's lymphocytes, there's the granulomatous response, and again, where's the duct lesion? I can't find it. It's upstream someplace, and there's no pictures of it. Just be familiar with that. Damaged ducts proliferate upstream. The other issue here, relevance of pathology, is in distinguishing from sclerosis and cholangitis. So this is going to be your main differential diagnosis, biliary cirrhosis versus sclerosis and cholangitis. This language you will not see in sclerosis and cholangitis. Sclerosis and cholangitis, sclerosing, fibrotic, onion skin appearance. Oh, well, there you go. Here's sclerosis and cholangitis. So sclerosing, that's good. Fibrosis, inflamed ducts. Onion skin appearance in distinction to the granulomas we just saw with biliary cirrhosis. Macroscopically, obliteration of the intra and extrahepatic bile ducts. Onion skin, we said. Cholangiogram. If they're ever going to show you a cholangiogram on the boards, this is going to be the disease, this beating appearance. And the reason I'm emphasizing this is because it is associated with ulcerative colitis. Virtually everyone, ulcerative colitis, I'm sorry, if they're giving me a sclerosis and cholangitis, it will be in the setting of ulcerative colitis. So it's just a good way to give you a patient with ulcerative colitis and then show you a cholangiogram. It's how they bring the two together. Here's the problem with sclerosis and cholangitis is look at the symptoms. Fatigue and pruritus, well, that's what we just heard with biliary cirrhosis. So how are they going to distinguish it? They're going to distinguish it because the patient has ulcerative colitis. They're going to do it every time and or give you that damn cholangiogram. They're not giving you all this other junk. And there's, again, just the summary of compare and contrast the two. It's not real complex. For sclerosis and cholangitis, you don't really do a biopsy, although you should be familiar with the idea of the biopsy and fibrosis is for staging prognosis. So normally, again, you make the diagnosis in the right setting with a cholangiogram. Now we actually use MRCP. It's not a direct cholangiogram. There's the beating appearance, fibrosis, not to beat it to death, right? I mean, that's really it on the ductal diseases, not real complex, biliary cirrhosis versus cholangitis. Check. And that concludes this discussion of cholestatic jaundice for the USMLE Step 1. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 Days in March. Thank you.